I'm Bob Duhamel, and today I'm going to talk a little more about calculating the impedance when you have a capacitor and an inductor in parallel. In my previous video, I took a simple circuit. Here's a generator, a capacitor, and an inductor. Made this 60 hertz, 100 microfarads, and 100 millihenries and we calculated what the total impedance of this circuit was using the standard product over sum. So that would be our capacitive reactance times our inductive reactance over our capacitive reactance plus our inductive reactance. And I used rectangular notation, so I was using complex numbers to calculate that. And then I showed that you really don't need to use the complex numbers because since this is all imaginary numbers, all you have to do is use the imaginary numbers. And knowing a couple of tricks about how imaginary numbers work, we were able to take the capacitive reactants and the inductive reactants. We calculated those, plugged those in, and just decided which way the sign went. And we got a quick answer without having to go through all the complex numbers. But if you watched that video and saw that when we had a capacitive reactance of 26.54 ohms and an inductive reactance of 37.68 ohms, I ended up with a total impedance of 89.8 ohms. And that was negative because it was mostly capacitance. But wait a second. If this is 26.54 ohms and that's 37.68 ohms, isn't the rule for parallel circuits that the total resistance is going to be something less than your lowest resistor? And shouldn't that work for this too? How did I get a higher impedance than either of those components? And you look at that and you think, can that be right? Well, remember how this circuit works. Let's take a look at how that reacts to frequency. So here is a quick graph. Here's our frequency. And here's our reactance. So our inductive reactance is going to, and I'll use the same colors I did before, as the frequency goes up, the inductive reactance is going to go up. And as I noted, I did make a mistake on the capacitive reactance. It's not going to be a straight line. It's going to be a curve. But nevertheless, what we're going to get as a result is an impedance that starts low, goes up, and then comes back down. And notice that this goes much higher than either of these. In fact, if there were no resistance and a perfect circuit, this would go all the way up to infinity at the resonant frequency. So knowing that, it does make sense that I could have an impedance that's higher than either one of the reactances. But let's do the math real quick and see if that works out. So what I'm going to do is go back to that circuit and I'm going to change the frequency so here we have our source, our capacitor, and our inductor. And I'm going to make this 50.3 hertz, roughly. So this is going to once again be 100 microfarads, 100 millihenries. And why did I pick 50.3 hertz? Well, let's do a quick calculation. In fact, I'll do it right here. We have our resonant frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of LC. So let's do that and find out what our resonant frequency is. So that's going to be L, which is 0.1, times C, which is 0 0.0001, equals, I'm going to take the square root of that, then I'm going to multiply that by 6.28, 2 pi, equals, and then I'm going to take the reciprocal, and lo and behold, I got 50.35. I'll just leave it at 50.3. Probably should change it to 50.4, but it doesn't matter. Roughly 50.3 hertz, so that is the resonant frequency of that. So let's calculate the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance at the resonant frequency. So capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi Fc, so that's going to be 6.28 times 50.3 times 0 0.0001 equals, take the reciprocal, and I got 31.65 ohms of capacitive reactants. Now let's do the same for the inductive reactants. That's going to be 6.28 times 50.3 
times 0.1 equals 31.58. So pretty close, definite rounding error. So yeah, I have some rounding errors, so they didn't come out exact, but pretty close to each other. So let's just even it out by saying it's going to be 31.6 ohms. Split the difference roughly there. So at the resonant frequency, we're going to have roughly 31.6 ohms. So there's 31.6 ohms here and 31.6 ohms there. So we have the same impedance for both of them. So let's do the calculation. So that's going to be our X sub L times our X sub C over our X sub L plus our X sub C. Let's put the numbers in there. I'll do that right here. So that's going to be 31.6 times 31.6 over 31.6 plus negative 31.6. Remember our capacitive reactance is always negative and we're going plus a negative number. So it's going to actually be 31.6 minus 31.6. So let's uh, multiply these together. Bring out the trusty calculator. 31.6 times 31.6 equals, and I got 998.6, or let's just make it 999. So that's 999 on top, and 31.6 minus 31.6 on the bottom. So we're dividing the product of the two reactances, which is 999 by zero. You can't do that. You can't divide by zero. Now you could argue, isn't dividing by zero infinity? Nah, mathematicians will say, uh-uh, just can't do it. But obviously it approaches infinity. So basically we are seeing that at the resonant frequency, we can mathematically figure it out. And not only do we get higher than either of these two reactances, but we get infinity for that. So that shows that this works even at the resonant frequency if we do this math. Remember, I simplified this. This is complex numbers, but we found out that we don't have to use, treat them as complex numbers. Just remember a couple of rules. And so that did bring us up to getting infinity at the resonant frequency. So if you saw that and said, hey, that doesn't look right, well, here I showed that it actually is right. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.